why bother spending so much time making something you could easily get at a lower price and much more quickly? In this fast-paced world, where does a slow craft like crochet have a place? I come from a tiny but high-stress city known as Singapore. And in this country that places so much emphasis on speed and efficiency, crafts like crochet are often seen as a waste of time. However, as someone who has lived with crochet for the past 24 years, I find it is the one thing keeping me balanced as life speeds past through its repetitive motions that are strangely therapeutic. It seems many others have discovered this for themselves ever since the pandemic hit the world. One of my students likens counting crochet stitches with counting prayer beads, and I find this an apt symbol of the meditative effect crochet has, especially during times of uncertainty. This could be the reason why slow craft, from pottery to baking, was what people turned to as the pandemic raged on. Cut off from physical social interactions and jaded from overindulging ourselves in our digital devices, we found what our hands could do for us with the simplest of materials, tools, and our greatest resource, time. We found the joy of creation, often mistaken as the troublesome way of feeding and clothing ourselves as we favor convenience in current times. And in relearning how to take care of ourselves, we enjoyed the fruits of our labor, the irreplaceable satisfaction of being self-sufficient. However, the current trend in media seems to preach the opposite, publish or perish. As the pandemic passed its peak of danger, Slow craft, which people adopted to cope with the sudden change in the pace of life, turned into yet another chunk of content. Ironically, these slow crafts are often being featured in videos that are deliberately sped up or edited to make them look simple. Everyone seems to be in a race to churn out bite-sized content overwhelming our senses. As the world conditions us to focus on the end product, many are forgetting that the point of craft is the process. Crafts have now turned into money-making skills, hobbies that can now churn out rewards, sometimes in the form of social media currency. Unfortunately, the joy of creation is often lost once our, once our mind shifts to the destination, which is the completion of the piece. Where completion once brought the satisfaction of having a certain capability, this is now traded for the satisfaction of obtaining a reward. Instead of the therapeutic joy of creation, we end up punishing ourselves by trying to work as quickly as we can to obtain more rewards, essentially turning ourselves into a mini factory. And that is how slow craft could be a wolf in sheep's clothing. How then do we disconnect from the destination and instead focus on the journey? A friend once asked how I would describe crochet as a lover. As someone who works with paper, she describes paper as an unforgiving lover, as she remembers every crease and every stain. And that was when I realized, crochet is the best lover you might have. It always forgives, as long as you're willing to go back and undo the knots. You could crochet a sweater, unravel it, and then make a different one with the same yarn years later, recognizing that destinations are not final and will change along with us as we grow. Crochet is a path we take from our home to a certain place, to and fro, again and again, until we could walk it with our eyes closed. It is that special ability of crochet to forgive that makes us fall in love with that same walk, learning something new each time. That process of making and then unraveling and remaking is both heartbreaking and therapeutic. It becomes a choice of focusing on all that time wasted or on the liberation of always being able to reinvent oneself while enjoying the process. <coughs> Unraveling your stitches does not mean total erasure though. The stitches might have vanished from view, but what you have made and undone had taught you new lessons. My recent explorations aim to bring attention to the present moment of making by deliberately melting or burning crocheted vases and lace doilies that take weeks to complete. Many people go, what a waste, when I share with them about my process. But it is actually quite liberating to know that the thing you are making is going to be destroyed from the moment you begin on it. It allows you to feel the joy in the present moment of making. 
much like the sand mandalas created by Tibetan monks, they are destroyed upon their completion. In that same line of thought, there is actually more to art than simply the destination. I like to think of art as a beginning more than an end, as it potentially plants a new seed of thought in your head from the moment you look at it. In that way, the artwork becomes a medium for which a bigger message is being carried. It can also be a means to empower people in its creation or alter ways of living, just like how slow craft can alter our rhythm in life. While I was volunteering for the Seto Uchi Art Trenale, an art festival in Japan, I observed how they revitalized depopulated regions using art by drawing in the young population with artworks that complemented the natural beauty of the environment. The elderly folk on the island, who were often left alone in their homes as their children moved to the bigger cities for work, found a renewed sense of purpose as they participated in the festival, some even taking it upon themselves to bring tourists around the island. They also regained a sense of pride in this island on which they live. The younger tourists visiting, visiting the islands recalibrated their pace in life by refreshing their minds with art and nature away from the busy cities. People in the city often lament how lonely we feel even when surrounded by people and how bored we are even when games, videos or tons of friends are available at a tap on our phone. It seems to be the effect of being overstimulated as we try to cram as many activities as we can within a short period of time. Even art has become a thing to be consumed quickly. However, in the art festival on the islands, the journey to discover the artworks is deliberately made inefficient, a protest against mindless consumption. The artworks are spread out across the island, accessible by foot or bicycle, and the journey between each artwork is a chance for you to slow down and take a breath, enjoy nature and refresh your eyes. In that way, the artworks are not the destination. They are a means of changing communities and also part of the journey in making us city dwellers slow down and look differently at what is around us. In having to search for the artworks instead of having them dropped in our laps or in a way we are all too familiar with, pushed under our noses on the Instagram feed, the message becomes more precious. As we take on an active role in our lives to search for something, our sense of purpose is determined. Finding our own answers gives us an independence that empowers us, something we also experience as we work with our own two hands, practicing slow craft. Crafting often requires each person to journey on their own creative solution, which contributes to the satisfaction of completing something. I often work with local volunteers for my larger installations, many of whom are housewives. They sometimes share with me about how they lose a sense of purpose after their children have grown up and their husbands are away busy at work. Crafting often becomes a way for them to pass time, but it actually does more than just that. By making the conscious choice of challenging themselves, they are empowered by the pride of finding a creative solution all on their own. Even if they had to trade days, weeks or months, the validation of knowing that they are capable of being more than just a caregiver is worth it. In my projects, the volunteers often had no idea how the final artwork would look, and they participated simply to be part of a bigger cause. Upon seeing the final installation, they would often excitedly try to identify which parts of the installation they had made, and were awestruck at how their small effort could contribute to a bigger vision. In this way, Art acted as a medium to renew their sense of purpose. The reward for crafting in this case is not transactional, as they do not get anything tangible back in return. But the validation they get from knowing they are capable of making a change is irreplaceable. I haven't always been appreciative of this slow craft, and I've had and still have many moments of irritation and impatience trying to figure out this slow dance with crochet and all of its knots. It is not something that you can master at the flick of a switch and something I'm constantly learning from every single day. But that's exactly what makes the journey so personal and precious. 
It feels magical to me how working on a slow craft can make time seem to pass so quickly, and I'm sure people who have experienced slow craft would agree. Time flies when we live each moment with a sense of purpose. In simply making conscious choices rather than passively consume in small acts of the everyday, we are taking baby steps to regaining this personal power to steer this roller coaster we call life. <laughs>